Welcome to the Futurist Public Intellectual. I wasn't planning on reviewing a movie on this podcast, but the Barbie movie is having such a cultural moment that to not talk about its insidious propaganda would be contrary to the duties of a public intellectual. Due to the movie's breezy trailer, I went into the theater this weekend hoping for some silly fun. I could not have been more wrong. Before I go any further, I need to inform everyone that the rest of the episode will have spoilers. If you plan on seeing the movie soon, then please pause and continue listening after you've seen the movie. Now on to the analysis. Since this is the futurist public intellectual, I will be focusing on the ideas presented in the movie and less on the movie itself. The movie's intense anti-male vitriol was confusing because of its choice of setting. Even though the writers Greta Gerwig and Noah Baumbach could have chosen anywhere in the world for a stereotypical Barbie to travel to when she visits the real world, she ends up going to Los Angeles. Since Barbie is sold all over the world, there wasn't any necessity to set the movie in the United States at all. But if the United States is going to be representative of the real world, then Gloria confusingly has a deep abyss of hatred towards men. How exactly is it terrible to be an American woman in 2023? Perhaps if you're a black woman or an undocumented Mexican woman or a lesbian. But the difficulties of those lives have much more to do with race or sexuality than it does with being a woman. If you read the online reviews by moviegoers, Barbie was best received by women who live in conservative patriarchal countries. It makes sense that the movie would be better received in countries where patriarchy is more pronounced. Therefore, the movie would have been a more effective critique of patriarchy if stereotypical Barbie had gone to, say, the Middle East. But I'll presume that the real world was deliberately set in L.A., and the spokesperson for third wave feminism was Gloria precisely because the film is supposed to be about the plight of women in places like the United States. In that case, the film's message is lacking relevance and nuance because the dynamics between women and men in the U.S. are significantly more complex than simply women good, men bad. Despite the movie's overt misandry, the writers don't seem to have a working definition of what a woman even is. Dr. Barbie is a trans woman with a noticeably deeper voice than the other Barbies. While I understand that the actress playing her has already transitioned, the movie leaves it ambiguous as to whether the character has transitioned. Sending the message that womanhood is rooted in a psychological reality, not a biological one. But when stereotypical Barbie wants to be a real woman in the real world at the end of the movie, the first thing she does is go to the gynecologist. This confusing scene implies that she now has a vagina, which contrasts with the scene with the construction workers where she explicitly tells them that she doesn't have a vagina. It now sounds like being a real woman requires a vagina, but then what is the purpose of having a transgender Barbie? Is she not a woman then? Even though the movie can't even settle on what a woman is, the movie clearly tries to portray women as categorically better than men. What Gerwig and Bombach might have not realized about their writing is that for all the effort that they put into making the Kens look pathetic, they couldn't bring themselves to completely lie to the audience. Despite the surface-level perfection of Barbie land, the Barbies themselves were definitely not good people. Their treatment of weird Barbie and all the Kens showed their true colors. I think the writers inadvertently portrayed the Kens 
ultimately as the better sex on the inside because the Barbies were the only ones who were ultimately mean-spirited. The ending particularly underscored the Barbies' indifference to their mistreatment of the Kens as second-class citizens. This mistreatment was the very cause of Beach Ken's enamorment with patriarchy. The writers also don't seem to understand that Beach Ken's overnight transformation of Barbie land into patriarchal kendom actually undermines the premise that women are better than men. Kendom must have happened because either the Barbies are so weak and gullible that they couldn't resist Beach Ken's revolution, or the Barbies voluntarily switched to patriarchy because they found some value in it. Neither possibility dovetails with the movie's girl boss rhetoric, and the writers never actually explain how this transformation occurred. I think the movie's worst narrative choice was the decision to reinstate matriarchy at the end of the movie. Since the movie presented us with one world with matriarchy and one world with patriarchy, this narrative choice implies that matriarchy is best. What's strange about this assertion is that it's actually a rejection of two very American values, equality and meritocracy. The aforementioned inconsistencies could have been forgiven if the movie at least redeemed itself in the end by embracing equality and meritocracy. But Gerwig and Baumbach inanely present us with an offensive future. The reinstatement of the original matriarchy with zero reforms implies that the writers believe that this is the way the world should be. This is precisely why people's assertions that this movie is satire doesn't make sense. If the audience is supposed to recognize that Barbie land is our world in reverse, then reinstating matriarchy means the analogous patriarchy in our world is righteous. So that means that this movie is either a terribly written satire or it's not a satire at all. As you can see, Barbie is a mess of a movie. Its rejection of equality and meritocracy is egregiously un-American, which is paradoxical for such a well-known American doll. If the movie had been a light-hearted romp through Barbie land, then it could have been an iconic children's movie. Instead, it's an overly politicized, narratively incoherent adult movie whose best character was, ironically, Beach Ken. Go figure. Thank you for listening to The Futurist Public Intellectual.